गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन चलिए स्टार्ट करते हैं चैप्टर फोर इंडिया ऑन द ईव ऑफ ब्रिटिश कॉन्क्वेस्ट द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द एटीन सेंचुरी सॉ द डिक्लाइन ऑफ द माइटी मुगल्स हु हैड बीन द एनवी ऑफ देयर कंटेम्प्रेरीज फॉर ऑलमोस्ट टू सेंचुरीज द रेन ऑफ औरंगजेब सिक्सटीन फिफ्टी एट टू सेवनटीन जीरो सेवन प्रूफ्ड सिग्निफाई द बिगनिंग ऑफ द एंड ऑफ मुगल रूल इन इंडिया It is argued that Aurangzeb misguided policies weakened the stability of the state and decline gained momentum after his death due to wars of succession and weak rulers. Though Muhammad Shah ruled for a long spell of 29 years, 1719 to 48, a, uh, a revival of the imperial fortunes did not take place as he was incompetent ruler. Muhammad Shah reigns Uh, witnessed the establishment of the independent states of Hyderabad, Bengal, Awadh, and Punjab. Several local chiefs began to assert their independence, and the Marathas began to make their bid to inherit the imperial mantle. So, uh, the next main heading is challenges before the Mughals. Okay, this is the sub heading: external challenges. In the absence of internal strength, the Mughals could not put a tough front against external challenges, which came in the form of several invasions from the northwest. The northwestern borders had been neglected by the later Mughals, and not much effort was expect uh, expended in protecting the borders. ठीक है एक box है वो पढ़ दे रहा हूँ. Nadir Shah was Mughal emperor for only 57 days in 1739. For those days, created uh, aftershocks that transformed India's politics. They broke existing uh, centers of authority, massively uh, shrinking the scope of Mughal power. They set loose bands of uh, mounted warriors who ransacked the countryside, seeking wealth from villages and towns. They pushed traders behind the walls of whichever power had the strongest fort. For a short period, of, for a short period, plunder rather than negotiation. Became the most effective tool for creating new centers of wealth. Those 57 days laid the ground which allowed the East India Company to conquer territories in India for the first time. ठीक है. Next हमारे पास heading है जो मैं लीडर आते हैं. That is the Nadir Shah. Hmm? The Persian Emperor attacked India in 1738-39, conquered Lahore, and defeated the Mughal army at Karnal on February 13, 1739. Later, Muhammad Shah was captured and Delhi looted and devastated, according to an estimate. Apart from the peacock throne and the Kohinoor diamond, seventy seventy crore rupees were collected from the official treasury and the safes of the rich nobles. Safes मतलब जो एक जो बक्से वगैरह होते हैं ना उसकी बात कर रहे हैं. Safes from the rich nobles. Okay, uh, Nadir Shah gained the strategically important Mughal territory to the west, to the west of the Indus, including Kabul. Thus, India once again became vulnerable to the attacks from the northwest. Next, I have us M. S. Shah Abdali, okay? Yeah, M. S. Shah Durrani, we say, he is not anyone. Who was elected the successor of Nadir Shah after the latter's uh, death in 1747? Invaded India several times between 1748 and 1767. He continuously harassed the Mughals who tried to buy peace in 1751-52 by ceding Punjab to him. In 1757, Abdali captured Delhi and left behind an Afghan caretaker to watch over the Mughal emperor. Before his return, Abdali had recognized Alamgir II as the Mughal emperor and the Rohilla chief Najibuddaula as Mir Bakshi, uh, Mir Bakshi of the empire, who was to act as personal sup- supreme agent of Abdali. In 1758, Najibuddaula was expelled from Delhi by the Maratha chief Raghunath Rao, who also captured Punjab. In 1759, Abd Ahmad Shah Abdali returned to India to take revenge on the Marathas. In 1761, Abdali defeated the Marathas in the Third Battle of Panipat. The last of Abdali's invasion came in 1767. Okay. Now it is a box over here, and ये बहुत अच्छा क्वेश्चन रहता है कि uh, why was empire shaking battles at Panipat or why always Panipat? Okay. Panipat and its adjacent regions located in present Haryana on the banks of the Yamuna and between the fertile plains of the Ganga and Indus rivers have witnessed several battles these battles changed the course of indian history at different points of time so first the first battle of panipat in 1526 was between babar and ibrahim lodi the result of the battle laid the foundation of the mughal empire by ending the rule of the delhi sultanate second 
द सेकेंड बैटल ऑफ पानीपत इन 1556 वाज बिटवीन अकबर एंड हेमू इट डिसाइडेड टू इट डिसाइडेड इन फेवर ऑफ द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द मुगल रूल थर्ड द थर्ड बैटल ऑफ पानीपत इन 1761 बिटवीन द मराठास एंड द अहमद शाह दाली पुट एन एंड टू द मराठा एम्बिशन ऑफ रूलिंग ओवर इंडिया एक क्वेश्चन यहाँ से निकल करके आता है कि वाई ऑलवेज पानीपत करेक्ट सो वाई पानीपत वॉज अ फेवरेट बैटल फील्ड पानीपत ही क्यों था देखते हैं पानीपत हैड अ स्ट्रेटेजिक लोकेशन वन ऑफ द पार्टीज ऑफ द ऑफ द वॉर जनरली केम फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ और द नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न थ्रू द खैबर पास टू गेट होल्ड ओवर डेली द पोलिटिकल कैपिटल ऑफ नदर्न इंडिया टू मूव अ मिलिट्री थ्रू रफ टेरेन डेजर्ट ऑफ राजस्थान और द अदर नदर्न एरियाज infested with dense forest was very risky and difficult on the other hand the rulers at delhi considered panipat as a confrontable strategic ground and hence they preferred to take the fight there its proximity to delhi made it easier for the indian rulers to transport weapons military and food supplies etc to the battle ground and still keep the capital insulated from the conflict at hand Panipat surrounding regions had uh, has a flat ground which was suitable for cavalry movement the main mode of warfare at that uh, time after the construction of the grand trunk road by shesha suri 40, uh, 1540 to 45 panipat was on this route it became easier for conquerors to find their way there the duration of monsoon rainfall in the region is short in comparison to other areas making it easier to fight the artisans or the smith of these regions were experts in making uh, warfare related material and hence it became easier for forces of both parties to replenish their war material okay so that's why this is the main reason that why they always choose uh, panipat hmm chale dekhte hain next heading hai weak rulers after aurangzeb and internal challenge first hai bahadur shah first 1709 to march in 1712 After a nearly 2 year long war of succession the 63 year old prince muzarram muazzam muazzam oh my god prince muazzam the eldest son of aurangzeb became the emperor at the age of 63 can you imagine matlab 63 mein dada ji ki banne ke dada ji banne ki umar mein ye prince ban rahe hain theek hai ek king bana hai ye so became the emperor taking the title of uh, title bahadur shah he was later called bahadur shah first He had killed his brother uh, brothers uh, Muhammad Azam and Kam Baksh in the war of succession. Kafi Khan gave the title of uh, Shah Bekhabar Bik- to Bahadur Shah. He adopted a pacific policy with the Marathas, the Rajput and the Jats. Shah uh, Shah the Maratha prince was released from Mughal captivity and the Rajput chief uh, were confirmed in their uh, respective states. However the Sikh leader Banda Bahadur attacked the Muslims in Punjab and hence the emperor took action against him Bahadur Shah was died in February 1712 theek hai unke baad aate hain hamare paas Jahandar Shah March 1712 to February 1713 approximately 1 saal with the help of Zulfikar Khan uh, Jahandar Shah became the emperor Zulfikar Khan was appointed prime minister he introduced a izara system to improve the financial condition of the empire Jahandar Shah abolished jizya theek hai next after it's come uh, Farooq Siyar 1713 se 1719 after killing Jahandar Shah with the help of Sayyid brothers Abdullah Khan and Hussain Ali known as king makers theek hai Farooq Siyar became the new emperor he followed a policy of religious tolerance um, by abolishing um, jizya and pilgrimage tax in 1717 he gave farmas to the british in 1719 the sayed brothers with the help of peshwa balaji vishwanath dethroned farooq siyar later he was uh, blinded and killed it was the first time in the mughal history that an emperor was killed by his nobles okay it was the first time next is uh, rafiud daraj darajat February 28 to uh, June 4 1719 he ruled for the shortest period among the mughals correct aap dekh sakte ho february se lekar ke sirf june tak ka among the mughals next hai mere paas rafiud daula june 6 to september 17 uh, 1719 the sayed brothers placed rafiud daula with the title shah jahan uh, shah jahan 2 on the throne the new emperor was an opium addict hmm? next aate hai mohammad shah ये भाई साहब उनका हिसाब किताब थोड़ा गड़बड़ता है इन्हीं को ही रंगीला बोलते हैं ठीक है मोहम्मद शाह रंगीला 
in Mamma Shah in 1719 to uh, 1748. After the death of Rafiud uh, Dawla, Roshan Akhtar became the choice of the Sayyid brothers. Mamma Shah, as he came to be known in the history, he was given the title of Rangila due to his luxurious lifestyle. Mamma Shah, with the help of Nizam ul Mulk, killed the Sayyid brothers in 1724. Nizam ul Mulk became the Wazir and founded the independent state of Hyderabad. Chikim, jo Hyderabad hai, ye Nizam ul Mulk nahi banaya tha. In 1737, Bajira I, the Maratha Peshwa, invaded Delhi with the small uh, army of 500 horsemen. In 1739, Nadir Shah defeated the Mughals in the Battle of Karnal and later imprisoned Muhammad Shah and annexed, uh, and annexed areas west of the Indus into the Persian Empire. Ahmad Shah, 1748-1754. to 1754. Okay, next ruler. Ahmad Shah was an incompetent ruler who left the state affairs in the hands of Udambai, the queen, uh, the queen mother. Udambai, uh, given the title of the uh, Qibla e Alam, was a lady of poor intellect who ruled with the help of her uh, paramour Javed Khan, a notorious aunches. Hmm? Next, we have Alamgir II, 1754-1758. Alamgir II was a son of a emperor Jahandar Shah. Ahmad Shah Abdali, the Iranian invader, reached Delhi in January 1757. During his reign, the Battle of Plassey was fought in June 1757. Then, Shah Jahan III, 1758 to 59, he didn't have any role. Then, Shah Alam II, 1759-1806. His reign saw two decisive battles, the Third Battle of Panipat, 1761, and the Battle of Baksar, 1764. In 1765, according to, the, uh, according to the terms of Treaty of Allahabad, August 1765, he was taken under the East India Company's protection and uh, resided at Allahabad. He also issued a forman granting to the company in perpetuity the Diwani, the right to collect revenues of Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. <clears throat> In 1772, the Marathas uh, took him to Delhi, where he lived till 1803. And in 1803, he again accepted the protection of the English. After the defeat of Daulat Rao Sindhya by the English, afterwards the Mughal Emperor became the uh, pensioners of the English. Then after that, then the English has kept pension. Then after that, he didn't get up. After that, you can see that the first time you can see that the later Mughals didn't have so much strength. You can see that for two years, four years, two months. He can't do his tenure. Okay? Akbar II, then after that, 1806 to 1837. He gave the title of Raja to Ram Mohan Roy. Okay? Akbar II, take care. In 1837, the coins bearing the names of Mughal Emperor were stopped. Next or last, Bahadur Shah II, 1837-1857. Bahadur Shah II or Bahadur Shah Zafar, Zafar being his surname, was the last Mughal ruler or the emperor. The revolt of 1857 had made a futile attempt to declare him the emperor of India. He was captured by the English and sent to Rangoon, where he died in 1862. In legal terms, the Mughal Emperor came to an end on November 1, 1858, with the declaration of Queen Victoria. Hmm. Next, the main heading is Causes of Decline of Mughal Empire. Why the Mughal Empire declined has been a subject of a debate among historians. A scholarly opinion can be divided uh, along two broad lines, those who view the matter as generally empire-related and those who regard the developments as region-related. The empire-related or Mughal-centric view sees the causes of the decline within the structure and functioning of the empire itself. The region-related view with the causes of Mughal decline in the turmoil and instability in the different parts of the empire. The decline was due to both aspects. The process of disintegration of the Mughal empire began during the reign of Aurangzeb, but it picked up momentum only after his death in 1707. At his death, Conditions were not such that the process of decline could not be checked. Although Mughal authority was challenged by several chiefs and rulers, none could assert independence in the face of the imperial might. The Sikh, Maratha and Rajput did not possess the capacity to overthrow the empire. They merely resisted Mughal power to gain and keep their independence in their respective territories. Thus, if the successors of Aurangzeb had been capable rulers, the empire might not have fallen. 
most of the emperors who came after Aurangzeb proved to be incapable, weak, and uh, licentious monarchs who hasn't who hastened the process of disintegration of the empire and finally its collapse. The major factors which contributed to the downfall of the Mughal Empire were uh, are discussed below. So, सबसे पहला आता हमारे पास इसी में एक सब हैडिंग है, shifting uh, allegiance of zamindars. Two classes shared the power of the state with the emperor during the medieval period, and the zamindars and the nobles. The zamindars were hereditary owners of their land who enjoyed certain privileges or on hereditary basis and were variously known as a rais, rajas, thakurs. Khuts or Deshmukh. They occupied an important place in the empire because they helped in the collection of revenue and in local administration for which they maintained soldiers. Though the Mughal had tried to curb the power of the zamindars and maintain direct contact with the peasants, they had not wholly succeeded. During the reign of Aurangzeb itself, there was a marked increase in the power and influence of the zamindars. The biggest fallout of this was that uh, religious that the regional loyalties were encouraged many local zamindars held helped the nobility the other powerful class within the empire to take advantage of the weakness of the empire and carve out independent kingdoms for themselves as we had just discussed about the hyderabad theek hai nizamul mulk ne jo kiya tha to ultimately usne empire mughal empire se apna ek hissa kaat liya tha jisse ki ab wo khud hi ja ke wahan pe rule kar rahe hain theek hai next hai hamare paas jagirdari crisis आप ऐसे समझ सकते हो कि लोकल पावर टू मेंटेन द आर्मी एंड सो ऑन ठीक है मतलब जो जो छोटे छोटे जो उस एरिया के जो लोग होते हैं जो वो बहुत ही दे हार दे आर लिटली हैविंग द मसल पावर द नोबिलिटी कम्प्राइज पीपल हु हु वर इधर असाइंड लार्ज जागिर्स एंड मनसब और अपॉइंटेड सूबेदार्स ऑफ मुगल सुबह ऑफ ऑफ मुगल सुबह एंड गिवेन द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ मेंटेनिंग दीज टू दिस क्लास बिलोंग टू मैनी राजपूत रूलर्स सूबेदार एंड एंड मनसबदार Mughal rule Mughal rule has often been defined as the rule of the nobility because these nobles played a central role in administering the empire although akbar had provided a well knit organize, organization for them there was a, a divisiveness among the nobility on the basis of religion homeland and tribe and each category formed a group of its own mutual rivalry jealously and contest for power among the various groups during the rule of the later mughals in the absence of a strong central leadership not only reduced the prestige of the emperor but also contributed to the decline of the empire hmm chaliye acha isi mein ye boxes diye gaye hain zara I'll let me just read this box ek aate hain The roots of the disintegration of the Mughal Empire may be found in the medieval Indian economy. The stagnation of trade, industry, and scientific development within the limits of that economy, the growing financial crisis, which took the form of a crisis of the jagirdari system and affected every branch of state activity, the inability of the nobility to realize to realize in the circumstances their ambition in the service of the state, and consequently the struggle of fashion and the bid. of ambitions nobles for uh, independent uh, dominion the inability of the mughal emperors to accommodate the marathas and to adjust their claims within the framework of the mughal empire and the conquest breakdown of the attempt to create a composite ruling class in india and the impact of all these developments on politics at the court and in the country and upon the security of the northwestern passes individual failing and faults of character also played their role played their due role but they have necessarily to be seen against the background of these deeper more impersonal factors various uh, this was the statement being this was the content given by the satish chandra theek hai नेक्स्ट आते हैं हमारे पास इरफान हबीब बोल रहे हैं अच्छा ये व्यूज़ हैं मतलब ये टॉपिक्स मतलब रिलेवेंट आप कह सकते हो कि मतलब ये कैसे कैसे जो टॉपिक्स को और डेप्थ में समझने के लिए ठीक है अलग अलग जो हिस्टोरियंस हैं इन्होंने अपने अपने भी व्यूज़ दिए गए तो आई एम जस्ट लिटरली रीडिंग दोस्ट ऑल्सो वेरियस एक्सप्रेश आर पुट फॉरवर्ड फॉर द रिवॉर्ड्स विच ब्रॉड अबाउट द कोलैप्स ऑफ द मुगल एम्पायर एंड हेयर आवर मेन कंसर्न इज विथ वॉट आवर सेवनटीन एंड अर्ली एटीन सेंचुरी अथॉरिटीज हैव टू से 
and it will be seen that uh, they at any rate put the greatest store by the economic and administrative causes of the uh, upheaval and know little of religious reaction or national uh, consciousness thus was the mughal empire destroyed no new order no new order was or to or could be created by the forces ranged uh, ranked against it theek hai it was given by irfan habib okay next aate hain dekh lijiye the more i study the period the more i am convinced that military inefficiency was the principal if not the sole causes of that the empire's final collapse all uh, all other defects and weaknesses were as nothing in comparison with this long before it disappeared it had lost all military energies energy at the center and was ready to uh, crumble to pieces at the first touch the rude hand of no persian or afghan conqueror no nadir no ahmed abdali no, the genius of no uh, european adventurer a duplex or a clive was needed to uh, to precipitate it into the abyss the empire of the moguls the empire of the moguls were uh, was already doomed before any of these they had appeared on the scene and had they never been heard of there can be little doubt that some that some maratha bandit or sikh freebooters would in due time have seated himself on the throne of akbar and shah jahan it was given by william erwin नेक्स्ट एक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू है सिडनी ओवंस का अ कॉमन इंप्रेशन इज दैट द डिक्लाइन फॉल ऑफ द मुगल एम्पायर वर ड्यू टू द डीजेनरेसी ऑफ इट्स सॉवरेंस बट इट वॉज इ रिट्रीवेबली रिउंड इन द रेन ऑफ औरंगजेब अ मोनाक ऑफ ग्रेट एबिलिटी एनर्जी एंड डिटर्मिनेशन बट लैकिंग इन पोलिटिकल इंसाइड एंड एंड अ बायोटेड मुसलमान he struck the first mortal blow by reversing akbar's wise and generous policy of ignoring distinctions of race and religion and reimposing the jizya or poll tax on uh, on his hindu subjects whereby he he estranged them and turned the noblest and most warlike of them the rajputs uh, hitherto the staunchest supporters of the throne into deadly and persistent enemies and shivaji and his followers not only uh, vindicated their independence uh, but struck a second mortal blow at the integrity of the empire they destroyed its military its military reputation they exhausted its uh, accumulated treasury and they spread disorder and uh, devastation over the deccan and beyond it they established an uh, imperium in uh, imperio thus the empire though not dissolved was hopelessly uh, debilitated the effective authority of the central government was uh, was then henceforth in uh, abeyance nadir shah after uh, after inflicting the extremity of humiliations of the emperor and his capital annexed the imperial territory west to the west of the indus the dissolution of the empire was complete it is sydney owens hmm? नेक्स्ट हमारे पास एक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू और देख लीजिए द मुगल एम्पायर एंड विद इट द मराठा ओवर लॉर्डशिप ऑफ हिंदुस्तान फेल बिकॉज ऑफ द रोटेनेस एट द को एट द कोर ऑफ इंडियन सोसाइटी द रोटेनेस शोड इट सेल्फ इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मिलिट्री एंड पोलिटिकल हेल्पलेसनेस द कंट्री कुड नॉट डिफेंड इट सेल्फ रॉयल्टी वॉज होपलेसली डिप्रेवड और इम्बेसाइल the nobles were selfish and short sighted corruption inefficiency and uh, uh, treachery disgraced all branches of the public services in the midst in the midst of this decay and confusion our literature art and even true religion had perished it is j n sarkar theek okay? hai next aate hain hamare paas jo heading hai sub heading rise of regional aspirations kya diya hua hai कि औरंगजेब रेन इट सेल्फ विटनेस पावरफुल एंड रीजनल ग्रुप्स लाइक द जाट्स सिख एंड मराठास डिफाइन द अथॉरिटी ऑफ द मुगल स्टेट इन देयर बेट टू क्रिएट किंगडम्स ऑफ देयर ओन दे डिड नॉट सक्सीडेड इन देयर इन देयर एफर्ट्स बट दे इन्फ्लुएंस द फ्यूचर कोर्स ऑफ पॉलिटिकल इवेंट्स इन देयर रिस्पेक्टिव रीजन देयर कंटिन्यूस स्ट्रगल देयर कंटिन्यूस स्ट्रगल 
against the empire for their continuous struggle against the empire for political uh, ascendancy weakened the empire considerably aurangzeb and after him bahadur shah won by attempting to uh, suppress the rajput spurred them to battle against the moguls the later moguls made an effort to follow a policy of reconciliation with the rajputs but by then it was already too late the rajputs no longer trusted the moguls enough to ally with them for the uh, for the welfare of the empire the marathas too were becoming a formidable uh, formidable enemy their aim was at first limited only to regaining control over the region of maratha but it soon went on to include getting a legal sanction from the mughal emperor for collecting the sar deshmukhi and chauth throughout india chauth matlab hota hai one fourth the produce which you are just producing it is going to the one fourth of the tax theek hai tax jo hota hai wo authorities ko jata hai chauth throughout the year theek hai throughout the india they uh, forced north northwards and by 1740 succeeded in spreading their influence over the province of gujarat Mal- malwa and bundelkhand the rajput struggle against the empire and the growing ambition and power of the maratha thus adversely affected the mughal might hmm? ek cheez aur hai box mein ki causes of the mughals downfall in a nutshell kya kya causes hain some of the main causes of the decline of the mughals are briefly were as follows first the government of the mughals was a personal uh, despotism and so its success depended on the character of the reigning reigning ruler the later mughals were worthless and neglected the administration of the state second with the absence of a, a def- definite law of succession there always occurred a war of succession this weakened the stability of the government and fostered partisanship at the co- at the cost of patriotism third the degeneration of the rulers led to the uh, degeneration of the nobility with factious uh, querels and intrigues intrigues uh, costing the empire heavily fourth the deterioration of the uh, army also proved disastrous for the empire fifth the empire had become too vast and unwieldy to be uh, eff- efficiently governed from a central authority under weak rulers and especially under the existing condition of transport and communication sixth aurangzeb religious policy uh, policy was uh, largely responsible uh, leading to revolts by rajput sikh jat and marathas seventh aurangzeb deccan policy was a complete failure and was an important cause of the downfall of the mughal empire eighth invasion of irani and durrani kingdoms gave a death blow to the mughal empire so these are the several causes ki matlab in in karano ki wajah se jo mughal empire hai wo pura dharashay ho gaya the mighty mughals theek hai नेक्स्ट आते हम लोग उसकी जो हेडिंग है सब हेडिंग इकोनॉमिक एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव प्रॉब्लम्स द नंबर ऑफ आर्मीज एंड देयर रैंक्स और मनसब्स हैड इंक्रीज्ड शार्पली ओवर टाइम देयर वाज अ लिटिल हेल लैंड लेफ्ट टू बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अमंग देम एज जागीर्स औरंगजेब ट्राइड टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एक्यूट शॉर्टेज ऑफ जागीर्स और और बेजागीरी बाय शोइंग एनहांस्ड इनकम फ्रॉम द जागीर्स ऑन रिकॉर्ड but this was a short sighted measure as the army tried to recover the recorded income from their jagirs by pressurizing the peasantry so both the armies and the peasantry were uh, antagonistic and then there were the wars the luxurious lifestyle of the emperors and armies alike the reduction in khalisa land all of which burdened the state the result was that the expenditure of the state much exceeded its income there was moreover no significant scientific and technological advance that could have improved a stagnant economy the once flourishing trade did not enrich the empire's coffers even as the inroads by european traders grew along coastal india these economic and administrative problems only multiplied uh, following the death of aurangzeb the empire had become too vast to be effect- uh, efficiently administered by a centralized system when the rulers were weak and incompetent theek okay. hai 
नेक्स्ट आते हैं जो मेन हेडिंग है राइस ऑफ रीजनल स्टेट्स ठीक है जो रीजनल रीजनल जो स्टेट्स हैं उन्होंने कैसे कैसे मतलब अपने ही उस क्षेत्र में राइस uh, मतलब राइस किया और अपनी पावर को कंसोलिडेट किया द स्टेट्स दैट इमर्ज एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द डिक्लाइन ऑफ द मुगल एम्पायर कैन बी क्लासीफाइड इन टू द फॉलोइंग थ्री ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज फर्स्ट सक्सेसर स्टेट्स ठीक है इसमें आता है कि दीज uh, These were the Mughal provinces that turned into states after breaking away from the empire, and though they did not challenge the sovereignty of the Mughal ruler, the establishment of a virtually independent and hereditary authority by their governors showed the emergence of autonomous polity in the in these territories. Some examples are Awadh, Bengal, and Hyderabad. Second, at the independent kingdoms. These states came into existence uh, primarily due to the uh, destabilization of the Mughal control over the provinces. Examples being Mysore and the Rajput states. Next third are the new states. These were the states set up by the rebels against the Mughal Empire. Examples being the Maratha, the Sikh, and the Jat states. Now main heading is our pass survey of regional kingdoms. Okay. पहला है हैदराबाद द फाउंडर ऑफ द असफजा हाउस ऑफ हैदराबाद वॉज क्लिच खान पॉपुलरली नोन एज निज़ाम उल मुल्क इट वॉज जुल्फिकार खान हु हैड फर्स्ट कंसीव द आइडिया ऑफ एन इंडिपेंडेंट स्टेट इन द डेकन बट विद हिस डेथ इन 1713 द ड्रीम रिमेन्ड अनफुलफिल्ड क्लिच खान डिस्गस्टेड विद द मुगल एम्पर हु हैड अपॉइंटेड Mubariz Khan as a full-fledged viceroy of the Deccan decided to fight Mubariz Khan he defeated and later killed Mubariz Khan in the battle of Shakhera in 1724 theek hai Shakhera he now assumed control of the Deccan and in 1725 he became the viceroy and conferred on him the title of Asafja next Awadh the founder of the independent principality of Awadh was Sadat Khan popularly known as Burhan ul Mulk Sadat Khan was a Shia. He had joined in a conspiracy against the Sayyid brothers, which resulted in his being given an increased mansab. Later, driven out of the court, he was prompted to found a new independent state. Sadat Khan committed suicide due to pressure from Nadir Shah, who was demanding a huge booty from him, and he was succeeded by Sardar Jang as the Nawab of Awadh. Hmm? Next, in Bengal. Murshid Kuli Khan Murshid Kuli Khan was the founder of the independent state of Bengal and he was a capable ruler and made Bengal a prosperous state he was succeeded in 1727 by his son Shujauddin and his successor Sarfaraz Khan was killed in 1740 by Ali Wardi Khan the deputy governor of Bihar of Bihar uh, at Gheria who assumed power and made himself independent of the Mughal emperor by giving a yearly tribute next the rajputs the rajput tried to reestablish their independence in the 18th century this forced the mughal ruler bahadur shah first to march against ajit singh 1708 who had formed an alliance with jai singh ii and durga das rathor but the alliance was broken uh, and the situation was saved for the mughals at one time the rajput controlled the entire territory extending from the south of delhi up to the western coast next time masur another important state to make its appearance in the 18th century was that of masur this territory located uh, located at the junction of the eastern and the western ghats was ruled by the wadiyar and various various powers uh, power interested in the in this territory turned the area into a constant battlefield in the end of the masur state was brought under the rule of hyder ali who ruled the state but not without trouble he was involved in constant warfare with the british and so was his son tipu sultan next is kerala marthanda verma established an independent state of kerala with travancore at uh, as its capital he extended the boundaries of his of his state from kanyakumari to cochin he made uh, efforts to organize his army along the western model and adopted various measures to develop his state next jats the agriculturist jat settlers living around delhi mathura and agra revolted against the oppressive policies of aurangzeb theek hai 
After some initial setbacks, uh, Chauraman and Badan Singh succeeded in setting up the Jat state of Bharatpur. But it was under Suraj Mal that uh, Jat power reached its zenith. He not only provided an efficient system of administration, but also greatly extended the territory of the state. His state included territories from Ganga in the east to Chambal in the south and included the Subha of Agra, Mathura, Meerut, and Aligarh. However, the Jat state suffered a decline after the death of Suraj Mal in 1763. Therefore, thereafter, the state is split into small areas controlled by petty zamindars who mainly lived by plunder. Guru Gobind Singh transformed uh, the Sikh into a militant sect in defense of their religion and liberties. Banda Bahadur, who later assumed the leadership of the Sikh in 1708, was defeated and killed. In the wake of the, in the, wake of the invasions of Nadir Shah and Ahmad Shah Abdali, the Sikh once again asserted their authorities. At this stage, they organized themselves into 12 missiles or confederacies, which uh, exercised control over different parts of the kingdom. The credit for est establishing a strong kingdom of Punjab goes to Ranjit Singh. He was the son of Mahan Singh, the leader of the Sukar Chakya missile. Missile is a missile, means that you group of missiles. So, there were 12 missiles before, so the Sukar Chakya missile was the same. That was Madan Singh, and who was Madan Singh's son? Ranjit Singh. Hmm? Ranjit Singh brought under control the area extending from the Satrush to the Jhelum. He conquered Lahore in 1799 and in Amritsar in 1802. By the Treaty of Amritsar with the British, Ranjit, uh, Ranjit Singh acknowledged the British right over the uh, right over the uh, Cis Satluj territories. Ranjit Singh proved to be an uh, efficient administrator. He greatly modernized his army with the help of Europeans. But towards the close of his reign, the English forced him to sign the treaty, uh, sign the tri tripartite treaty in 1838 with Shah Shuja and the English company, whereby he agreed to provide passage to the British troops through Punjab with a view to placing Shah Shuja on the, on the throne of Kabul. Ranjit Singh died in 1839. His successor could not keep the state intact and soon enough the British took control over it. Next, Ate Marathas. Perhaps the most uh, formidable province to emerge was that of the Maratha. And under the capable leadership of the Peshwa, the Maratha uprooted the Mughal authority from Malwa and Gujarat and established their rule. At one time, they claimed the right to be the uh, chief in inheritors of the Mughal dominion. But their authority was challenged by Ahmad Shah Abdali in the Third Battle of Panipat, 1761. The Marathas quickly re uh, recovered from the defeat and offered the most formidable challenge to the English East India Company in the struggle for political supremacy in India. Next, Aten, Royal Khand and uh, Farukhabad. Hmm? The estates of Royal Khand and the Kingdom of the uh, Bangash, Bangash Pathan were a fall uh, out of the uh, Afghan migration into India. Large scale immigration of Afghan into India took place in mid 18th century because of political and economic uh, turmoil in Afghanistan. Ali Muhammad Khan took advantage of the collapse of authority in North India following Nadi Shah's invasion to set up a petty kingdom, Royal Khand. This was the area of the uh, Himalayan foothills between the Kumau in the north and the Ganga in the south. The Rohilas, as the uh, as the inhabitants of Rohil Khand were known, suffered heavily at the hands of the other powers in the in, uh, in the area. The Jats and the Avad rulers, and later the uh, the Marathas and the British. Muhammad Khan uh, Bangesh Bangesh and Afghan set up an independent kingdom to the east of Delhi in the area around Farukhabad and during the reign of Farukhsiyar and Muhammad Shah. Next topic is uh, nature and limitations of regional states. Okay? The independent political system that emerged in the provinces continued to maintain ties with the Mughal imperial authority and acknowledged the emperor's importance as an umbrella. Even rebel chieftains of the Marathas and the uh, Sikh re recognized 
the Mughal Emperor as the supreme authority. The polity that emerged in these states were regional in character and functional with the collaborative support of the different local groups like zamindars, merchants, local nobles and chieftains. The provincial rulers had to take care of these various local interests in order to maintain themselves. Of course, there were exceptions. For instance, in Mysore, rulers did not recognize the local chieftains. The regional states had certain limitations. The provincial rulers failed to develop a system based on sound financial, administrative and military uh, organization. Though some of them tried to modernize, uh, notably Mysore, on the whole, they were backward in science and technology. Another drawback uh, was the constant warfare these states had with the neighboring regional powers war in which none could ultimately dominate. In fact, these states were strong enough to challenge Mughal power but none was able to replace it with uh, a stable polity at an all India level. The Jagadari crisis intensified as income from agricultural uh, declined and the number of contenders for a share of the surplus multiplied. Though trade internal and foreign continued without disruption and even prospered, the rest of the economy stagnated. Next main heading is uh, socio-economic con uh, conditions. Okay? 18th century India failed to make progress economically, socially and culturally at an adequate pace. India became a land of contrast because extreme poverty and extreme luxury existed side by side. The common uh, populace remained uh, impoverished, backward and oppressed and lived at the bare subsistence level. The rich and the powerful enjoyed a life of luxury and lavishness. But it is worth noting that the life of the Indian masses was, by and large, better in the 18th century than it was after 100 years of British rule. Next topic is heading. This is subtopic. Agriculture. Okay. <coughs> agriculture is that though agricultural, uh, agriculture was technically, technically backward, it was worked by the hard labor of peasants. But this hard worked class seldom got the fruits of their labor. Even though the peasants' own reward was miserable, uh, miserably inadequate. Even though the agricultural produce supported the rest of the society, a peasant's own reward was miserably uh, inadequate. They were forced to pay uh, exorbitant amounts to the state, the zamindars, and the jagirdars, and the revenue farmers. But this was this worst under uh, British rule. Next heading here: trade and industry. On account of being self-sufficient in handicraft and agricultural products, India did not import foreign goods on a large scale. On the other hand, its industrial and agricultural products were in good demand in foreign markets. Hence, its exports were more than its import. Trade was balanced by import of silver and gold. India was known as the sink of precious metals. Items to import from the Persian Gulf region, uh, purse, raw silk, wool, dates, dry fruits, and rose water. From Arabia, coffee, gold, drugs, and honey. From China, tea, sugar, porcelain, and silk. And from Tibet, gold, musk, and woolen clothes. And from Africa, ivory and drugs. And from Europe, woolen clothes, copper, iron, lead, and paper. Items of export. Cotton textiles, raw silk, and silk fabrics. Hardware, indigo, saltpeter, opium rice, uh, wheat, sugar, pepper, and other spices, precious stones, and drugs. Important centers of textile industry. Dekka, Murshidabad, Patna, Surat, Ahmedabad, Broch, Chanderi, uh, Burhanpur, Jaunpur, Varanasi, Lucknow, Agra, Multan, Lahore, Masuli Patnam, Aurangabad, Chikakol, Vishakapatnam, Bangalore, Kambatore, Madurai, etc. Kashmir was a center of woolen manufacturers. Shipbuilding industry care. Maharashtra and the Andhra region and Bengal were the leaders in shipbuildings, and Indian shipping uh, also flourished. Indian shipping also flourished on the Kerala coast at Calicut and Kilon. The Zamorin of Calicut used the uh, yes, used the 
Muslim Kunjali Marakers who were well known uh, for their seafaring ability for his navy. Shivaji Bhosle uh, navy put up a good defense on the west coast against the Portuguese. According to Bipin Chandra, the European companies bought many Indian made ships for their use. Okay. Next heading is status of education. The education imparted in 18th century India was still traditional which could not match with the rapid developments in the West. The knowledge was confined to literature, law, religion, philosophy and logic and excluded the study of physical and natural sciences, technology and geography. In fact, due to over-reliance placed on ancient learning, any original thought got discouraged. Elementary education among the Hindu and the Muslim was quite widespread. In the Hindu and Muslim uh, elementary schools were called uh, Parshalas and uh, Maktabs respectively. The education was confined to reading, writing and arithmetic. Children from the lower caste sometimes attended the school but female presence was rare. Chatuspati or Tolls as they were called in Bihar and Bengal were the were the centers of higher education. Some of the famous centers for Sanskrit education were uh, Kasi, which Varanasi we say, uh, Tirhut, Mithila, uh, Nadia and Utkal, ya Utkala. Uh, Madrasa were the institution of higher learning for, Pers for Persians and Arabic, Persian being the court language and learned by the Muslims as well as the Hindus. Uh, Azimabad, Patna, uh, Azimabad bolte te, Patna ko pehle was a famous center for Persian education. People interested in the study of Quran and Muslim theology had, uh, had to acquire uh, proficiency in Arabic. Societal setup. Okay, heading a many castes and the many sects. The society of 18th century India was characterized by traditional outlook and stagnation. Though there existed a certain degree of broad cultural unity, people were divided by caste, religion, region, tribe and language. The family system was primarily uh, patriarchal and caste was the central feature of the, so uh, of the social life of the Hindus. Apart from the four Varnas, Hindus were divided into numerous sub which permanently fixed their place in the social scale. Though the choice of profession was mainly determined by caste consideration, by the caste consideration, uh, exceptions occurred on a large scale, making caste status quite fluid in some parts of the country. Caste councils and panchayats enforce caste norms and regulations. Even though Islam uh, Islam enjoined social uh, equality on the Muslims, they too were divided by consideration of caste, race, tribe, and status. Religion uh, religious consideration was not uh, not only kept the Sunni and Shia nobles apart, but also the Irani, Afghani, Turani, and Hindustani Muslim nobles and officials apart from one another. The Sharif Muslims consisting of nobles, scholars, priests and army affairs often looked down um, upon the Ajlaf Muslims, uh, Ajlaf Muslims or the lower class Muslims in a manner similar to the way of the higher caste Hindu treated the lower caste Hindus. Religious conversions occurred and caste proved to be a major de divisive force and elements of disintegration in the 18th century India. Next subheading is position of women in society. Women's ki kya kya position hai? Let us see. In the patriarchal family system, uh, system in India, except in some social groups in Kerala, women possessed little uh, individuality of their own. Though there were a few exceptions, while upper class women remained at home, lower class women worked in fields and outside their homes, supplementing the family income. Certain outdated and exploitative social customs and traditions such as the parda, sati, child marriage, polygamy did exist which hindered the progress of women. The plight of the Hindu widow was usually miserable. The evil of dowry was especially widespread in Bengal and Rajputanas. Sensitive, uh, sensitive Indians were often touched by the hard and harsh life of the wind, uh, widows. Raja Savai Jai Singh of Amber and the uh, Maratha general uh, Prashuram Bahu tried to promote widow remarriage but failed. Menace of slavery. 
ठीक है मिस्ट्री डेंजर ऑफ स्लेवरी यूरोपियन ट्रैवलर्स एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स हु केम इन द सेवनटीन सेंचुरी रिपोर्टेड द वाइड स्प्रेड प्रिवेलेंस ऑफ स्लेव्स इन इंडिया इट इज बिलीव दैट सम पीपल व कंपेल टू सेल देयर ऑफ स्प्रिंग ड्यू टू इकोनॉमिक डिस्ट्रेस फेमाइंस नेचुरल कैलामिटीज एंड एक्सट्रीम पॉवर्टी जनरली हायर क्लासेस ऑफ राजपूत खतरीज एंड कायस्त केप्ट वुमेन स्लेव फॉर डोमेस्टिक वर्क हाईवर द स्टेटस ऑफ स्लेव इन इंडिया वॉज बेटर दैन दैट इन यूरोप Slaves were usually treated as hereditary servants rather than uh, rather than as menials. Marriages took place among the slaves, and the off offspring coming out of such wedlock were considered free citizens. ठीक है? अगर इनके जो बच्चे होते थे, तो वो बिल्कुल free citizens free citizens थे, वो slave नहीं होंगे. The advent of Europeans heightened the slavery and slave trade in India. European trading uh, companies purchased slaves from the market of Bengal, Assam and Bihar and took them to the European and American market. Abyssinian slaves were sold at Surat, Madras and Calcutta. Next heading I have pass that is the developments in art and architecture and culture. Okay? The decline of the imperial uh, Mughals forced talented people to seek the patronage of newly established state courts like Hyderabad, Lucknow, Jaipur, Murshidabad, Patna, Kashmir, etc. At Lucknow, Asafud Dawla built the Bada Imam Bada in 1784. In the first half of the 18th century, Savai Jai Singh built the Pink City of Jaipur and five astronomical observations at Delhi, Jaipur, Banaras, Mathura, and Ujjain. He also prepared a set of timetables called Jij Muhammad Shahi to help the people in the study of astronomy. In the south, in Kerala, uh, Padman Nabhapuram Palace, famous for its architecture and mural mural paintings, was constructed. New school of paintings were uh, born and achieved achieved distinctions. The painting of the Rajputana and Kangra schools became uh, became prominent and revealed new uh, vitality and taste. A distinct feature of the liter literary life of the 18th century was the growth of Urdu language and poetry. It was the period of uh, of Urdu poet like uh, Mir, Sauda, Nazir, and Mirza Ghalib, 19th century. In South India, Malayalam literature flourished under the patronage of the Travancore rulers. Kalakatu uh, Kunchan Nambiar was a noted Malayalam poet. The Tamil language was enriched by sitar sitar poetry. Tayu Manavar, इतने difficult name होते साउथ के. Tayu Manavar, uh, 1706 to 1744, one of the best exponent of sitar poetry, protested against the abuses of temple rule and the caste system. He Ranja the romantic epic in Punjabi literature was composed by Varish Shah In Sindhi uh, in Sindhi literature uh, Shah Abdul Latif composed Risalo a collection of poems these are just some examples of literary works in regional languages okay so i hope ki aapko ye chapter samajh mein aayega this is just we are reading do it, doing it okay and uh, let's see that this uh, sessions are uh, very much fruitful to you aapko samajh mein aa raha hai because bahut sare log videos bas dekhte hain aur uh, jo normal jo books padhni chahiye aap hazaron videos dekh lijiye lekin you will not get pass into any of the competitive exams if you are not going through the ncrts or your uh, respective books okay so i am doing my job just let's see what happens okay till then okay bye bye and thank you very much